to Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One here to inspire and empower your wig journey. Today we're going to look at and discuss a brand new color by Henry Margu. This is their 10613. Many of you have fallen in love with the 10613 GR, as have I. So I'm really interested to check this one out. We're also going to do a comparison coming up. I purchased each of the featured wig styles today with my own funds from Wig Studio One. We invite you to shop at Wig Studio One and I'll make it very easy for you to find these styles. So if you go below this video and expand the description box, I will attach a link, a direct product link. And if you click on that link, it will take you out to the Wig Studio One website where you can take a look at all the colors, uh, prices, more details. If you have any questions for us, about this style or any other, please reach out to support at wigstudio1.com. So this brand new color today I'm featuring on the style Jewels by Henry Margu, and I know they have many styles out there available in this new color. Um, my guess is they'll probably get around to all of them eventually. So if you don't find your favorite Henry Margu style in this color, I think it will be coming soon. So let's take a look. Now let's just recap a little bit. I have done reviews on Jules before. Jules is a short, little voluminous, curly, shag style cut. Um, it features about a seven inch fringe piece, which kind of coils back into the style. I think it's just gorgeous. And what I love about Jules is that it has all the volume and soft curl, but it's also tapered on the ends, making it very modern, and it's very easy to customize the volume here. So I typically like just to apply the heat from my hands to sculpt it. Uh, Jules becomes very sculptable in my own hands here. So you can pump it up for lots of volume. It's just above the collar on most people, so around 10, 11 inches, something in, in there. And Jules features a lace front and then is open top, sides, and back. A lot of permatease and volume on Jules. So if you are averse to permatease, this is probably not the style for you because it's a soft, pillowy style permatease that you really can't do a whole lot with. I mean, you can use the heat from your hand to sort of shrink it a little bit which is not a permanent solution, by the way. There is no safe way to remove permatees. I just want to put that out there. But today, this is about the colors, right? So let's dig right into this 10 6, I know so many of you out there don't like rooted colors or they just don't flatter you. So this is a really nice addition to Henry Margu. Let's take a look at 10 6, So by the description by Henry Margu, this is a light ash blonde with platinum highlights, okay? which is a bit of a misnomer, I think, for um, the 10 613 color code because a 10 would indicate to me like a light golden brown or something. Um, and this is much, much lighter than that. I put this on the same level as like an, an 18, a 17 or 18. And then I put the platinum pieces around a 101 and I'll show you why here. So that base color uh, to my eye is a light to medium ash blonde, a true ash blonde. There's no gold in it. There's no hint of any kind of warmth. It just looks very nice and ashy to me. Now the highlighting, they call this a platinum. I suppose it could be like an ash platinum, but it has been toned. To me, it looks like a toned white. Um, so those platinum highlights are also very cool. Now you can see variants from piece to piece and style to style. Henry Margu has always shared with me that uh, they arrange the highlights and the color and things according to the best look for that particular style. So you can see some variants because of that reason. Uh, most of the highlights here are gathered around the face that that why I want to call it white just because it looks white to me but let's get up close on the lace Henry Margu does an amazing lace front they always have and it's never been disappointing to me so it does run temple to temple the knots are very fine and obviously that highlight is brought right up to the lace front which kind of lightens and brightens around the face I think this would be an amazing color uh, if you like the grays but you don't like a lot of blue base grays or the darker grays. This would be light and powdery, a blonde to gray transition, if you will. OK, 
okay? I think it would be perfectly suitable for that. Um, also, if you like an unrooted platinum, this would be a nice choice as well. Now, I prefer rooted colors. That is just my preference as we all have our own. Um, and one of the advantages of selecting and wearing a rooted color is that it obscures wefts on the top. So in the case of jewels here, beautiful, beautiful style, and the lace front is absolutely impeccable, but you do have some open wefts on the top. And on a color that's very, very light like this, um, you can definitely see down into the, uh, the wefts on the top. It almost feels to me like there just isn't enough uh, density to cover them up. Now, what I do is I just kind of pinch up that hair around the parting space. So find your parting space, um, but then use your creative styling techniques to obscure it. Now, I'm sure that's not going to bother some of you. And this is an extremely high quality, well-made wig, but you just can't avoid um, some of this because it's such a light color. So if I choose this color on a style again, I'll probably choose it on Kendall, which has a full monofilament top. So when I do look down in, I won't be able to see the wefts. All right, so super beautiful. Let's now take a look at the 10613 GR, which I have back here on Naomi. Naomi came out a couple of years ago. It's a really beautiful kind of angled, short uh, bob, and it has it's sprinkled with some wavy curl around the face. Now it features uh, the lace front and left monofilament side part and you can see down in there. So let's take a look at this. Now the rooting changes everything, right? Um, if it were only as simple as removing the root, it doesn't really work that way because the root carries through the style and makes it, uh, gives it a different dimension. It has more depth. And then when you pair, when you pair a darker color against a lighter color, it also changes that color a little bit, the perspective of it. So basically, I, I think that the same ingredients and color ingredients are at work in the 10613 GR. Um, however, that rooting does change it. So let's take a look. So you see that same uh, ash blonde and platinum, uh, but there also appears to be a little bit of a sandy blonde running through it. And I have seen that sandy blonde uh, a little warmer on certain applications than others. So where I think that's stemming from though is this medium brown root, okay? A golden brown root. So this is a medium golden brown root. And then you have to stretch that root out a little bit uh, throughout the style. And that just warms it up a tad. It makes it more dimensional. Um, it doesn't look powdery at all because, um, because the root is giving it depth. So is the 10613 exactly like the 10613 GR minus the root? No, I really think that the 10613 on Jules here um, is more, it's, it's lighter, it's ashy, or it's powder, more powdery. It almost feels like it's been toned all over. Um, so you can decide for yourself which one you like the best. I'm just a very firm lover of the rooted shades. But I am going to get to an age one day where the roots might just not look as good on me and I might decide for the unrooted version. So we're so lucky to have all of these beautiful options from Henry Margu, right? I'm going to go ahead and change into each of these and do a side by side comparison in both indoor and outdoor light for you. And you can let me know which one is your favorite. We'll see you again soon on Taz's Wig Closet at Wig Studio One.